to our public first interview this morning, this Friday, last day of this week. Now, Mandera has been in the news lately for all the long, uh, wrong reasons. First, you know, teachers declining to go back there. And then, of course, the incidents of insecurity, which continue to disturb by the peace in that county. Last uh, yesterday, there was another attack that three, injured three people. Uh, really going against the grain of what the government is saying, that the county will be secure, will be, will be safe for people to go and work there. There's also a mass strike going on in Mandera. So we thought it wise to bring the man who should be the first ambassador of Mandera County, the senator of that county, Honorable Bill O'Carroll, Karibo. You are you have become notorious as a county in this country, uh, you know, the place where people don't want to go. Isn't this raising concern for you as the <laughs> diplomat 01 <laughs> for Mandera? It is. Um, I guess that's what happens in life, isn't it? There's always ups and downs. I think Mandela in the last um, uh, few months, unfortunately, um, we've been in the limelight for the wrong reasons. I think the one, because I think it, it's important to understand a bit of the background, that yes. for that part of the world, it's always been one of those areas that rarely, uh, you know, get covered by the media. None of the media stations have offices there. You rarely get anything positive other than something negative that happens. So if anything positive happens, it rarely gets carried. Right. Um, and of course, whatever negative happens, it usually gets reported from the northern region. That, that has always been the general uh, trend. And it's possible that a lot happens that is not even reported. That yeah. has been the general trend in the region. Then unfortunately, yeah. that incident in December, uh, you know, where uh, brothers were killed in the bus attack and in the... In the quarry. Uh, the, so uh, that, I think, created all this um, uh, negative... Um, uh, but I think it's also important to appreciate the location of Mandera. Mandera is a uh, town in particular uh, because all these problems that you've heard about insecurity is in one constituency out of six uh, constituencies in an area that is over 26,000 square kilometers or twice the size of Western province, uh, really. Um, and so when you look at that particular constituency of Mandera town itself, because it shares the border with Somalia, it literally the towns, right the two towns. The the two towns, sh you know, uh, there's only a street that passes between the two. Um, so it is easy for someone to cross from the border and do something. And that's on the main, uh, in the town in Mandera East. The rest of the five constituencies have not had a single incident of terrorism at all in all those years. So the Korome uh, and the bus attack. This is all in Mandera town. It is five, six kilometers of Mandera. Yeah. Shabab or whoever they are. Happening it's within on one it constituency. Within one constituency. Mandela, Mandela town. Mandela town constituency. Yes. <laughs> now, when, so when someone says, um, I'll give you examples of some teachers who are here. For example, some of them say they teach in Takaba uh, Secondary School. Takaba Secondary School is over 250 kilometers from that town. From it, I mean, yes. I mean, it's never. You know, one of if, if you look at those areas, Mandela, uh, like Mandela, West Takaba, Elwa, those are the safest places you can ever imagine in this country, where people sleep even outside and nothing. They don't know of any crime. They've never heard of any. <laughs> so when a teacher teaching there now says, oh, you know me, I can't go there because, you know, something well, the happened. the problem is not so much, I think there's a, a, a mix of problems here. Yeah. There is the insecurity one for mm -hmm. those who are exposed to Mandera Town and Correct. the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And the, the remote interior uh, rural Mandera, which now has other problems, which I think people are I raising. Think about I think even that is a bit of a bit the conditions exaggerated. of work there are very, very adverse. Uh, I, I there think is discrimination, which is being raised by the native Somalis mm. of that uh, mm. inhabitants mm. of there against mm. f uh, what I would call aliens <laughs> or interior Kenyans who could work there. This you know, Makali, uh, th these things it. are exaggerated. With oh, all really? due respect to those teachers, you know what happens? Let me give you a perspective on the teachers so that you can understand. I, in fact, today I was just looking at a study on teachers where more than half the teachers would rather they get another job. This is half of the 288,000 teachers. <laughs> yes. So is, is teaching is, is, so what is happening is the background is this. When you are recruited, you are not recruited by TSCs of in Nairobi. Yes. The vacancies are advertised for secondary schools by the Board of Governors of those specific secondary schools in Mandera and Waji and those places. The primary schools are advertised by those individual district education boards of those counties. So the teachers were actually, they went all the way to be interviewed and recruited in those schools. It's is never been an issue. Is yes, that true? That's the law, is, yes, it, yes. Isn't yes, it that yes, people, yes. Uh, teachers are recruited by the Teacher Service Commission and posted to schools no, 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 around no. the country? You are actually 
recruited by those individual schools and boards in those towns. You travel all the way, you apply for a job, you get interviewed and recruited no, no, in no, that uh, place. Uh, Mishma, those should that, be, that those should be fundamental. Uh, teachers who are employed by school boards. No, 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 TSC, all of them. TSC, okay. TSC then does then, uh, not. This localization happened more than 10, I think right. really, almost 15 years now, that is the so policy. So they got those jobs by applying that for That is why today, location. when they will advertise, they will advertise by the school and by the boards, actually. The advertisements you'll see in the papers, you will actually be recruited by those and interviewed by them. So what is happening is immediately you get a job. That has been the practice. You look for a job there. When you get a job, the tendency is you want to go and work home, um, you know, in Western, in Central, wherever you want to be. This, this has been the... So there is a law yes. uh, that TSE came up with that you must work for five years for that respective board or school that recruited you. Right. Then after that, only after finishing a term of five years, can you apply to be transferred outside. So what is happening here is a case where teachers want to take advantage of this, you know, the security and saying that, oh, I want to move. So it's, it has nothing to do with security. And all those stories really have been created because we've had this country for 50 years. Mandera has been there. Waji has been there. Gariza has been there. I mean, honestly. If but we were, but I but mean, but some but of the allegations about discrimination and all those things. Yes. I mean, we're not living on the moon. Where have those guys been? Don't forget, they are, they are the ones who taught us all the way. All of us were taught by teachers from our country. Where are all those allegations? Uh, yeah. why, would, why do you create them today? It's just maybe those out. things were always there, but they were never brought out. Because if they are, people can they will have been documented. The by the way, there's a system in public service. Yeah. If they were, any of those things, first of all, you lodge a complaint with your own uh, institutions there. And this thing would have been documented by TSC. How come none of those incidents have been reported to TSC, have ever been documented, have ever been raised? And today somebody sits and rounds a report and says, you know, we are being discriminated. By the way, let me tell you the reason why these things are exaggerated. If you look at that report they're talking about, these are individual incidents. One teacher lady is saying, you know, I was pregnant, I could not get uh, whatever. Yes. Do you know how many incidents, if you've ever worked in public service, all over the country, those individual incidents within public service are there. You cannot rule out, even in private sector, wherever they are. Even yes, here, you'll have happen. an employee complaining that, yeah. oh, it was denied leave. Or so. You cannot document that and then say, this is the general picture yes. of that county. I think this is, this is really an attempt to try. And, and those teachers genuinely want to move out to their own areas because that is what they, everybody does when he's recruited. Even here, we apply, they apply, even ours. They apply for jobs around here. When they get, they want to go home. It, th those things happen because that is the way the recruitment is done. It depends on the vacancies that are created. Yeah. yeah if, so if they were to say, uh, now they're going to advertise those vacancies, they do did. you think yeah. that you know, you'll have enough locals mm. uh, to fill the vacancies which are being Absolutely created by not. the departures? Absolutely not. And in fact, the people who are now really, really desperate and want to apply for those jobs, and you'll see it um, immediately, are people from our country. They're there by the thousands because all of them know those teachers that this story about moving out has nothing to do with, 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 the, with the environment. It's about you having got a job now and you really want to go home because you can take advantage of this situation and say, I have to be transferred. Yes. But it's not about lack of, it's not about the environment. In fact, it's the best environment to work. And you can check with it. any public servant who has ever served in Northeastern yes. today. We're not talking of 60s when communication was bad. Today you can be on internet or anywhere in Northeastern province, anywhere. It has better communication facilities. They have, uh, you know, better uh, um, uh, environment, really. And the people there have always been. And Except I don't uh, uh, roads, accessibility. Yeah, generally the roads. Are, but now the they income. fly. They fly to Mandera, their daily flights. They fly to Wajia, their daily flights. So it's not, a, it's not really an excuse. There's no excuse. We're not, you know, there is um, a colonial perception that Northeastern was a hostile, you know, area in terms of environment. And yeah. there was hardship allowance and so forth. Yeah. So people have perpetuated that. To date, can you imagine? You want to go to Gariza, you're paid house, uh, hardship allowance. Yet Gariza today would be a better place to work than in many of these, if you go to some places in Kiambu. You talk about security. So How uh, many people, even in your own company working here today, from Kiambu would want to spend in Kiambu? The, you, you stand up, 90% chance of dying working in Kiambu or in, 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 in Kakamega because lack of security than in any way in Mandera apart from, for example, that border that, area that, where that, that is That should be news to a lot of people. It should. It shouldn't. <laughs> because the image it shouldn't. been created Read really the police is reports, the annual insecure. crime reports from Mandera, Waji, and Gariza. Yes. It's the lowest. Any time, any year, and I challenge anyone to go back the last 10 years and check the crime record. Crime record yeah. by police. Any type of crime including the mugging, the killings, the hijackings, the rapes, yeah. or whatever you the call it. The truth is that, I mean, so when one from my own knowledge, I mean, the uh, Muslim areas yeah. usually will have lesser crime. 
Correct. Okay, other crime. What now is happening? The violent Al Shabaab terrorist. Yeah, which was crime, an incident. Which, which is correct. The biggest challenge to to the Mandera. And it happened in Nairobi. It yeah. happened in Mombasa. There yeah. have been explosions all over this country. Yeah. Now, you know, I mean, so you cannot really then single out one particular county and say why is it happening in northeastern province? Yeah. It happens in Garissa. It happens in Mombasa. Everywhere it happened. So and Mandera, this is not a matter that is, you know, the perception. The thing that really disappoints the Mandera people. Let me tell you, yes. it's not about. People wanting to move. It's up to them. They want to move, they can move. But the, the challenge is this. When you create a perception that the locals, the residents, the people of those counties are, are the anti. ones who are responsible for those attacks because they and Shabapa are one and the same. This is the perception that these teachers have created, that some of the people who really want to take advantage of this and move are creating, which is wrong, really. There yeah. are millions of ch people who live. There are the population of that area is over nearly 3 million. Yeah. These people are teaching hundreds of thousands of students. Yeah. The lives of those people those students, the residents, the parents, I mean, it's not less significant than their own lives. They should be saying what not should have said is, look, yeah, government but, but, but the provides problem security. Is why I think that argument seems to carry some water is that when the attacks happened, mm. well, presumably, of course, they were not conducted by locals mm. or by terrorists or people who had crossed from the border across, mm -hmm. but they targeted people who were not necessarily Mandera, Correct. Uh, traditional Mandera residents, or upcountry people. So how do you explain that? They did that in Westgate. They yes. did it in Lamu. Why is that not an issue? They singled out every person in the in Westgate supermarket. The Muslim ones were allowed to go and the other ones are shut down. This is what Shabab has done yeah. because they were targeting in Spain. They always, that is their philosophy and that is their, that's their whatever. Yeah. Why is it special in Mandera? Why was it not an issue when it happened in, in Lamu? They did the same thing. They singled out non Muslims. And you know these are criminals who are opposed, these are terrorists That's who right are right. fighting this government. Right. You yes. are at war with them. Yeah. So th I think the perception that you know you locals you are working together, that's why you are not being targeted is wrong. I, I, I think that is the thing that okay. disappoints Kenyans. I mean, uh, many people in that. Well, that let's part now of look at the security situation there. I mean, the government is saying it has improved security. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it's been telling people to move out of the, some areas, you know, because. It is not safe, or they cannot guarantee their safety. How how is that? In fact, that 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 that, that action by the police of arresting those 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 um, uh, businessmen who are mining, yes, workers. I, I think that really was a very disappointing piece of to, every, to anyone who read it, because the responsibility of the government is to provide security to everyone. True, an incident happened in a particular quarry, but the fact that it happened in a quarry doesn't mean that quarry would forever remain shut because, uh, you know, something happened. Yes. That Westgate will forever remain shut as a monument because something happened. It's being renovated. Are you saying tomorrow we cannot open Westgate? I think really that that was a wrong thing, um, uh, in my view. I think they, of course, the argument was that they were not opposed to it. It is working during the day, but they didn't want people spending there at night. But even then, that should have been a matter that they should have uh, warned those guys and, and really taken them out of the place rather than lock them up. Um, yeah. But I think I yeah. think we all know it, public. It is one thing mm. perhaps the government to say, look, this area is unsafe. Mm. Uh, you know, mm. you are vulnerable. Mm. You could be attacked mm. here mm. from mm. our intelligence, mm. and tell them get out of there, uh, which, which is what seemed to have happened. No, what is happening is um, the government, of course, has, 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 has enhanced security. But let me tell you that um, the quarry itself, you know, is right on the border. That particular quarry. The other quarries, by the way, that have never been shut and that have never been hit, uh, I mean, in the area. Right. But that particular one, that was, was right on the border with Somalia. Um, we visited there. The thing is that, um, so the, the security forces uh, are few and, and, and didn't want to, sp you know, s spread it's things on every, yeah. you know, every, every activity that happens. Yeah. Um, so I think the, 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 the understanding was that they work during the day. Because daytime there's no problem, but evening you, you go back to your homes in town. Yeah. But I think what happened is I think some guys sneak back and decided to put their tents there. And I think they didn't want to security. Obviously, nobody wants to security officers so don't want to take the risk that um, it's under their watch something again happens. Yes, yes. They will run the risk <laughs> of being <laughs> losing their job. So I think that that must have been an overreaction. Um, but otherwise, I think I think really for someone to sit here. Uh, hundreds of teachers and saying Garissa is not safe, Wajia is not safe, Mandera, you know, is I think that that, that really is it's, yeah. it's something that is... Um, All right, uh, about arresting the security insecurity there, uh, what measures have been put in place from your perspective and are they working? Since you say Mandera is right on the border, so accessibility from the terrorists is almost uh, guaranteed. What is being done and what is not being done that you think should be done? Let me start with what is not being done. What is not being done is to secure the border, the area uh, on our border on the other side, KDF that went into Somalia has not attempted and is to not secure secured the, yeah. on the other side of the border. The so the border other of Mandera. Yes, so anywhere across the border is still being, uh, you know, um, occupied by Al-Shabaab and other, 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 other groups. 
that's something that has not yet been done and we have said immediately the town for example Burhawa on that side those towns on across immediately should actually be under KDF so that they move out quick smile and they really create a buffer zone 40 50 or 100 kilometers that's one thing that has not yet been done and that we've said they must and is, is critical in maintaining uh, security on the border there um, the second thing that I think um, is to look at what has been done. What has been done is they have um, uh, enhanced security in terms of providing more KDF soldiers, um, complete with par you know with armored personnel carriers and everything on the border, and um, you know the level of patrols, the, lot of the level of uh, mobility by those forces uh, is significant, um, and I think that has deterred. And then in the last few weeks, they have level of intelligence by the security forces has also really uh, gone up. They have picked up uh, quite a number, arrested a lot of uh, the people who have actually been involved in those. Um, in those incidents and, and many others, I think, who may have been uh, um, in the last few weeks alone. By the way, the perception again, and, I, and this is something that should come out clearly, if you looked at the last week and two weeks alone, there are a lot of people who have been arrested, yes. the, including the key planners of that thing, yes. according to the police. Yes. And they're all Muslims from upcountry. They're not Somalis. So the perception that everybody there and everything else about the Somalis is also wrong. A lot of the people that were arrested in the last yes, few months, must, uh, the uh, last few months, by the way, yeah. are people who... Uh, recruit from Nairobi, from Tanzania, from Uganda, and they transit them through that place. Because it's the easiest place to exit. Because the two towns share, you know, and it's so it's easy for you to just like cross. Busia, you know, yes, the yeah, Kenya it's side. like Busia. Um, the two Busia. So um, they have enhanced uh, the level of intelligence too. Yeah. Um, the tr public transport, the buses that ply with GM Mandera, they also provided with escort right. uh, vehicles um, and Ascaris on board. And so I think that, that, that has dramatically uh, yeah. changed, really, yeah. the, the level of um, insecurity. Yeah. In terms of going forward, I mean, we don't have much time, but uh, so what, somebody who doesn't know Mandera, I mean, wh wh what is great? What is happening in Mandera? How <coughs> is it going? Uh, you, you know, it was one of those counties or areas in the country that lagged behind in development since independence. Under devolution, are you making strides? How I many let's, kilometers let's, of let's, let's, context <laughs> <laughs> let's contextualize. Yeah. the lagging behind yes. <laughs> you know the, the lagging behind is not by choice yes. it's deliberate government policy that ignored or neglected that region um, which today by the way has not changed apart from the resources that are channeled constitutionally through devolution, through devolution yes. little less has changed absolutely if you look at the other trillions that this government has very little, in fact, uh, trickles down to that part of the country. Initiatives are going and the neglect yeah. <coughs> is not just <coughs> on development. It's even on social uh, <coughs> aspects like education, <coughs> like health. And I want to give an example here about education um, because that's the one that has been on the limelight. That county and Majia and Gariza have been at the bottom in terms of performance for the last two or three decades, really. Any time, yes. whether it's KCP, or, uh, or um, KCSE, it's the same. Why? Because one, those same schools we are talking about today, with hundreds of thousands of children, if you look at the teacher-people ratio, it's the worst in the country. You'll find a school with eight classes, with hundreds of children. The maximum number of teachers may be three or four. To mm. date, I'm to talking date. of today, yeah. even with all these teachers who are on those streets, even yes. if we said send them by. So the quality of education is extremely poor. The facility is not available. You find schools, which are secondary schools, mm -hmm. without laboratories. You need so affirmative forth. action. So, so then what happens is that in terms of performance, really, it's not because the people there are dumb. It's the level of, uh, of, of, of facilities, facilities, the equipment, and the, and the teachers. So the same guys who perpetuate that, the, you know, the not teachers and whatever, they never discuss the issue of performance. They never hold their teachers to account. Why is this region performing? Why are you guys, are you teaching? They're not looking at all those things. So what has happened is that in health sector is the same. Um, we, had, we have today, Mandera, the worst mat mat uh, mat maternal mortality in the world. And this, this you, can, you can take yeah. home. It's been published so many times. Mm. <coughs> 3,795 deaths health clinics and centers per 100,000. I yeah. mean, so really, when you neglect a region completely, no resources are being sent there. Um, and then you know, it, it, then you say this area is is is, is not is not a good area. Uh, now, what we have done in in um, uh, with this devolution, luckily, Mandela happens to be one of the areas that is getting a reasonable sum of money. Um, and 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 um, we've um, uh, what they are doing, the county government uh, the, uh, the team, I know, is is uh, prioritizing uh, areas like health. 
Um, for instance, last year they did recruit nearly 300 um, health workers and, and, and managed to get um, uh, almost 30 or so new, uh, over 30 health facilities up yes. and running. Yeah. But again, uh, I think because of that perception about the region, you know, uh, everyone working there wanting to get better terms. Yeah. Today, teachers, I mean, nurses have been on a strike for the last three days. Yes. Um, because saying, look, we, we need bad, better terms. Bad working conditions. <laughs> they, we need better terms. We also terms. depart from that. <laughs> <laughs> What will happen? <laughs> you met you know, and the these are the same guys who applied for a job more than less than a few months ago. They didn't know what and to do. You no. know, the reality and uh, 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 the perception and, are and, and they know the terms of these people are usually <laughs> generally set. Uh, so, so what I think they are doing is um, focus on roads. Yeah. But the main road, the main, you know, the road that, the trunk road that goes Nairobi to, to Mandera, it's, it's really a disaster. Because it comes under the national government, there has been no maintenance of that road. We are now pushing under this um, annuity program for the government to uh, to tarmac um, uh, some of that. Otherwise, what the county government is doing is to, to, is to maram those other uh, county roads. So I think, really, we are hopeful um, that things will change yeah. in the long term with, yeah. the, with the resources that we are getting in the county. Okay. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, the challenges are Needs a lot, enormous. a lot more Marshall Plan for Northern Kenya. But we had one time the minister, uh, Mohamed Elmi, for Northern Kenya. I mean, how did in that fact, change? When what next needs to be Absolutely not. That was a cosmetic ministry. Absolutely not. In 2003, when Kibaki came in, yes. they came up with a Marshall Plan. We de they developed it. I remember we went there and launched it and so forth. And for Northeastern, <laughs> nothing much happened. Yes. Then in the second time, we created North his Northern Kenya Ministry. Yes. Again, a cosmetic, really. A ministry that gets 400 million, that was simply coordinating activities. Mm -hmm. So that, 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 that has been um, uh, the challenge. But things have really changed. If you really go to the ground, yeah. um, you'll actually be surprised that apart from the main infrastructure like the roads uh, to the area, uh, in terms of the people, really, the services that are available in terms of the business, the community itself is very enterprising, you know that very well, um, and, and things are really different on the ground. I mean, people are trying their best really to make their areas look, you know, very, very comfortable, yeah. um, okay. but, but it's just that the economy, the of course, uh, nothing much. I mean, uh, it's been killed. What completely. What, how is the economy of that area? That, uh, that economy, uh, that, that the economy of that area has been destroyed by the successive how, What is the future like there? It's been livestock based. Livestock and pastoralism, I the way of life, has never been accepted by, by, by the government. Uh, and, and, and the only source was we used to market during the colonial times. Um, they created livestock routes, and you'd bring all the animals from Mandara, all those areas to uh, KMC Nairobi or even KMC Mombasa and export them. We were doing very well. Yeah. You know, both of them were mortgaged <laughs> a yes, long yes. time ago. By, by yes, this, yes. You know, so what happens is that um, marketing of livestock has never been a priority for the government. It's not. The way you they market your coffee and tea and sugar, yes. no, we don't have that and we don't have any fund or any, any levy or anything that benefit the, the way you assist your sugar farmers in Western way. Yeah. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Yeah. So what the county governments are trying to do now is set up um, some abattoirs yes. and probably uh, have uh, airports and, and try and look at the possibility of maybe exporting uh, uh, the beef. So, but yeah. generally what has happened is a lot of people seem to have uh, uh, lost interest because of droughts, persistent droughts and yeah. lack of marketing and so forth. People seem to be moving out of uh, uh, pastoralism or livestock really and, 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 and people seem so to be else? getting into... I mean, really, into I mean, there's nothing else that much can be done there because there are no resources, there's no oil there. Uh, no minerals. You'll be substance. surprised. Uh, have we the company that is doing uh, prospecting for oil yes. in Mandara was about to start its first drilling in uh, well, exploratory well in Elwak. And they had pretty good chance. And, and, and they just shut down yes. immediately that bus attack happened because, because it was not very. Yeah. And they're resuming, I think, maybe this month. I think they're doing yeah. that. In Wajia, they have found substantial deposits of oil. So this environment will change because what has happened is that in the, in the past, by the way, even all those areas have huge deposits of gypsum. We import gypsum from other countries. Yes. You can supply, you can even export to other countries, the level of uh, gypsum and other things that are there. They are part, they, there's so much resources in that area, but because of uh, infrastructure, yeah. um, you are not on the national grid, you don't have you know, roads. I think that has been the, the challenges. But going forward, I think we are hopeful uh, with these new systems of devolution that um, we, can, we, can, we can change in the long term. Mm. Mm. So security, future? likely to be improved. Security, I think, I think it's a question of addressing the, the whole concern about Al-Shabaab in, in, in Somalia. And I, I, I think the, the you, if you are following what is happening in Somalia yeah. uh, and the level of engagement by KDF and other uh, AMISOM and so forth, I, I think I, I would be very hopeful that um, uh, 
um, in, in the next few months or, year or whatever, the situation should stabilize and yeah. Madara should be back to what it was. And I think it is. Recently, we went with the Senate Committee on Security and they, they visited all those places. Yeah. They actually was, we went to the markets. There isn't that, that really um, uh, alarming uh, you know, notion that you hear when you are in Nairobi when you're on the ground. It's, it's not yes. really that. <laughs> um, it's not that. I think people just simply want to get advantage of getting a transfer, but they should not really create, do yeah. it on our... Uh, <laughs> but talking about that education, I mean, the performance there has been really, really terrible uh, mm -hmm. in all exams. Mm -hmm. uh, now, from what admissions are happening now, there's been, you know, that aspect of uh, affirmative action to get some students who qualified with even low marks given the environment to get to national schools and so forth. Are you satisfied with the uh, process so far, the recruitment of former one places? No, I think I, I, I like uh, Professor Kemeni's um, uh, approach because if you simply say, let the best only be given the national school, yeah. um, when you know that there's no level playing ground, um, you know, they, they, there's no uh, equity in, 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 in the first place, even in the, in the primary schools that produce, um, the for the reasons that I've just mentioned earlier. Yes. Uh, I think what he has done to try and um, and make it more equitable so that, um, um, you know, other regions and other schools, uh, including the private schools and so forth, have to be taken into consideration in giving the national... I think that is that's remarkable. Personally, I, I fully support that, that approach they have taken. And I'll give you an example. For instance, uh, Mandara County has no national school, in spite of the fact that the government has been talking about it during the, uh, the last 10 years. Uh, Wajia doesn't have a national school. There are counties that actually many. Mandera, but uh, even the new ones they announced uh, that increased. It's not the there. To Absolutely not. There's only one national school. They, they only included Gadez High School as a national school. They don't have it. Uh, so what happens is that. <laughs> 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 then you remember they talked about schools of excellence, the primary yes, schools yes. that they would, and yes, then they would uh, nothing. Those centers of excellence. Nothing so 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 really, I mean, the guys who manage education here. They, 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 they never visit those places. They don't know what's going on. They, there isn't any deliberate effort to I try and create a center of excellence. Yeah, they, they ought uh, to have given 30 million they they ought to. To develop that uh, infrastructure. Those CDF things. Yeah, there <laughs> 30 million allocated to <laughs> centers of excellence uh, and at least two in every county. Not almost. absolutely not. We don't that? have it. We don't have it. There is no national school as we speak. And that's why I think what he was trying to do was to try and create opportunities so yeah. that not only those guys with over 400, but at least some schools where some people, the best was around 300 something can also get. But generally, we have had that opportunity um, uh, on affirmative action in the past. Yeah. I think what they need to do is create, uh, continue with an affirmative or develop an affirmative action, even for in terms of admissions really to help, not just in secondary schools, but even in universities. Because I have, I'm telling you, from Mandara County, now I have people who have been, who have, who have very good grades, and they miss by one point to be admitted for medicine. And yet you cannot even get it. You know, and, and you know the environment under which that person lands. It's not the same as an alliance student. And then you say, look, you must have the 47 points so that alliance person has for you to get admission in, into University of Nairobi I, I, for medicine and so forth. And yet I cannot. When we advertised for doctors, specialists, yeah. last year, not a single person applied. Which specialist would want to go and work where he knows in the evening he cannot do his moonlighting yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you must then provide good pay. I mean, that is for the county then to. And then, what are you going to do with Sarem? Uh, uh, <laughs> what are you going to do with Sarem? And she tells you, this is what you can pay, and you cannot do more than that. Yes. And this is why this nurse is on a strike. Yes. Um, so, but 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 they are being given six thousand surely six thousand uh, hardship uh, not six thousand six hundred yes. hardship allowance yes. for civil servant civil service workers. In northern Kenya, is that I, I, I think what the, what what most public servants have been pushing for, especially teachers, is that if they're paying hardship allowance, if at all they have to, because yeah, I don't support it personally, but if they have to, then they should base it as a percentage of the pay rather than an absolute figure. Um, yes. That that would be more reasonable um, because then the more you earn, the more hardship you get. Yeah. Um, but but would it not be surprising to you, uh, really, as a Kenyan, that 50 years after this country got independence? We are paying an allowance that was set up by the Wazungus who didn't want to go there. <laughs> that that their countries six that you that you literally you know tag as a hardship. They want two thousand, uh, <laughs> not six hundred. But you are saying you're opposed to the hardship allowance. Why? It's the concept that fifty years later you, you, you don't you think know, that place is a hardship area. You no, have it it's shouldn't have been. Why should it have? Why should it be today? Yeah. After fifty years, why should Northeastern continue to remain a hardship area? Why? What what we are saying is that really, that we should continue to marginalize that area. That's the con connotation that comes with the hardship. Yes. It's marginalized, which means then 
even you now being posted there, you feel you have been posted to a hardship area, is a punishment. So yeah. that any public servant who goes there feels it's a disciplinary action, really, as opposed to you're not being favored by the government. Well, you're I not think, being you know, I, I that, think it's wrong. Isn't that I a think. failure to accept that there are certain circumstances or environment, uh, the environment that is a little more difficult to work in the environment, as compared to somebody, say, who works in Machakos? The environment or, in Dubai, or, let me tell you, or, uh, is 50 degrees Celsius, <laughs> if it's the weather. Let me tell you. I mean, there, there are places in this world yeah, that, are hotter than that, that are worse than Mandela <laughs> and Wajian County. But yeah. what happens? The government invests and you will make it paradise if you want to. Yeah. So if the government there is... There are no facilities, there are no roads. Yes. Uh, there are no other social amenities. By many decision of the policy makers. The same policy yes. makers so who now... as long as that situation persists, should indeed be accommodated with some... In, in, in but for how long? To make people go there. Say 50 years, years after we got independence. You had, your go, you had our Jubilee celebration. Do you want us to continue? <laughs> Another 50 years that that area should remain a hardship area. No, I, I, I think me what I want. Including, you see, that's why we have equalization fund, even within the, the constitution. Unable to disperse, an acknowledgement which, has, which, is yet, is required which is yet to be dispersed to debt. Yeah. Um, it don't, you know, I think really the, the, what we are saying as the people of that area is nobody wants to be, you know, given that tag, that tag of being a hardship area, marginal, which yeah. means is a marginalized, is a bad area. So that even you, as you go there, you have, know that you're being sent to a bad area. Yes. I think what we want is to remove that tag and to tell Kenyans, look, that is part of this country. True, it may not have been developed to the same level as this one, but that is what the government ought to be doing, saying that we must invest money, we must do the roads, we must do the, you know, and other, other infrastructure. That's what they need to tell Kenyans, so that we all feel that we are part of this country. What are you going to tell the people of Mandera, the youth in Wajia? They can't get ID cards, because you told them Al-Shabaab is around the corner, so we can't issue ID cards. You cannot teach. If you don't provide the teachers, in fact, what we want to do, let me tell you, if TSC did not advertise today, we were going to announce that we shut down all the schools and we tell our kids it will be better even to join Al Shabaab. The government doesn't want you. The people of Kenya don't want you. But the it's people not were, the government. you Clearly, know, that people were hating there. Measure. People were hating there. That is because that is what you are telling them. That's what it's, these teachers are telling the children there. That you are not important. You are not a Kenyan. You don't deserve to be taught. You, you know, you you can die. Me, I can't <laughs> die because I'm a Kenyan. You know, that is a very bad, you know, picture that yeah. was given. No, to no, the no, people of that area. And it was been, wrong. You know, really, it was Senator, wrong. There has been an acknowledgement that those problems which have been raised by those teachers are not superficial. They are real. They are prejudices that are being... By uh, the employer. Is it, did it come from the employer? Uh, uh, the, the prejudices are local. You know, they have insisted. And I think TSC has acknowledged from the testimonies. And, and these gentlemen and women appeared before the parliamentary committee. And we are going before the, the parliamentary same. committee this yes. morning as the leaders from the area. Yes. We will give our p version of it. Do you want to respond? Wait. Yes. And TSC has yet to appear before that committee, and they'll give their version of it. Any employee really has a, has a, has a channel for lodging his, his legitimate complaints. Yeah. You cannot say you have been working there for five years. You have never lodged any complaint. You have a file in your headquarters here. You have a file at the district level. Nothing. You have a ministry that supervises of education that supervises the whole uh, you know, profession there. Yeah. You've never lodged any. Today yeah. you come back after teaching us for 50 years. Oh, you know those guys are bad. It just occurred to you those guys have been discriminating. <laughs> we have lived in this country. You have lived in this country. We've yeah. never had a single Kenyan complain that when you go there, you know you're... Garis, I'll give you an example. For example, religious, they say, discrimination. It has 39 churches. More churches in Garissa than some of the counties that you guys come from. More. Yes. In one town. Garissa. Mandara, you go. Wajia, you go. All of them have got churches of all denominations. Somebody will come here and tell you we're not allowed religious freedom. No, and they've never ever complained that, you know, we are not being allowed so to go to on. What to you, it's an excuse to, to, to get out. And they should have simply said, you guys, look, we have served there. Please. Let's go somewhere else. Allow us to, to, to move. <laughs> there are more people who have been traumatized than those teachers. What happened? Look, yeah. the, that bus happened to be just a bus yes. that was ambushed. There were other people. It just happened that the schools are closed. It was December, and there were more teachers in the bus than other people. But there were other public servants who died there. Yeah. None of those teachers, except one, out of the 25 teachers who were killed in that bus, only one was working for TSC. 24 of them were for private school teachers. Every private school in Mandera, town, forget about other parts of the areas, where this thing happened, they reported in January. Over 40 primary you know, and secondary private schools. Not a single teacher. They are there by their hundreds. We went there with the Senate committee. We had a meeting in the hall in front of the TV yeah. with 200 of them in one hall in Mandara town. They all, well, they said, look, those are stories. If those guys are not traumatized, the yeah. private school teachers whose colleagues were killed, yeah. a guy Why teaching in Takaba, yes. teaching in Wajia and Gariza, yes. says I was traumatized. Yes. Come on, give us a break. <laughs> <laughs> really.
All right, that's it. Uh, but before we wind up, just outside Mandera, you are chairing the Senate Finance uh, mm. is it Committee, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I know the time is up, but just that last one, the World Bank survey that came out yesterday, or the other day, saying counties are spending a lot of their money on um, salaries and so forth, and not even meeting the 30% threshold of uh, development allocation uh, of the budget. Mandera, first of all, and your general view about that report. What I needs to be done? I, I think that report, uh, uh, frankly speaking, I saw it on the papers, a few, um, and, and I think that report was not uh, factual. The actual you report that you need, accurate. no, it isn't. Look at the figures from the control of budget. Uh, and the reason why it's not factual, I'll tell you. For example, they've said in, uh, in Mandera, the amount of money that was spent on development was less than 20 something, around 20 something percent. Yes. Mandera is one of the counties with the highest uh, development budget. It had nearly 70, almost 70 percent of their money in the first year was for development because they had very little recurrent expenditure. What has happened, and I think they need to contextualize this, is that in the first year things started late the procurement processes because we started releasing the money actually we started legis the legislations were out in around september yeah. so we released the money from september so most counties started planning for their development expenditures in the first half of the following year last year um, so most of those development projects that have been planned and have been uh, tendered out and procurements were done were not captured if you were doing accounts for june last year yeah. um, but otherwise the law is very clear as far as i'm concerned last the first year of devolution every county all the 47 had provided for development budget of about of, of, of over 30 percent the lowest was 32 percent in the first year right. the following year which is the, the current financial year we're in there are two counties or three actually Nyeri and a couple of other counties two was, uh, in fact there are two counties that had a budget uh, for development of below 30 percent two and even that one i think the, 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 the controller had to insist that they review their Budget. But in all the others, they are above 30. But what is happening is, I think, depending on the time you capture the report, yes. you miss you out miss the actual out figures. Yeah. Okay, so nothing alarming. All right, thank you, uh, Senator Bill O'Care of Mandera, uh, pitching for this county, Mandera, that is being shunned by some, you know, workers who don't want to go there. He says, the place is great. Best environment you can find to work. So go and work. And he says Mandera is getting better, better. Thank you. It was a time for feedback. So much you heard about Mandera. Uh, keep watching Power Breakfast.